I welcome bugs and viruses and molds into my garden because what those are doing is they're teaching my plants how to survive. They're selecting for plants that thrive in the ecosystem exactly as it exists. So I don't have to poison myself and poison my garden and poison my ecosystem in order to prevent all these dangerous diseases. I welcome the diseases, I welcome the birds because they teach my plants how to be strong and vigorous. One time I was growing corn and the skunks and the raccoons came into my corn patch and they tipped the plants over and eat the cobs. I didn't like that, but I didn't do anything about it. I just saved seeds from the plants that survived the coons and the skunks. I did that for two growing seasons. And by the third growing seasons, the plants were big and tall and they had these strong stalks and the coons couldn't push them over and eat them. The skunks couldn't climb up them and eat them. Now I can grow corn with no protection whatsoever against the animals. It thrives because the animals taught the corn how to be strong. I apply that same principle to the slugs, to the viruses, to the bacteria, the molds, whatever it is. I welcome them as teachers in my garden for teaching my plants how to be strong. If I have a, a contract with the plants, it's with the species. It's not with any particular plant. I'm perfectly willing and happy to chop out plants that are, aren't a fit for my ecosystem. Another thing I'll do for example, if I see a tomato plant that has blossom end rot, do I blame myself for being a bad farmer? Do I blame the calcium, the water, the, all this stuff and make myself crazy? No, I pull the plant out and throw it away and say, oh, that was genetically inclined to have blossom end rot. So I have no blossom end rot in my garden, not on tomatoes, not on squash, not on peppers because any plant that ever has that for any reason, it just goes bye-bye. So to start a land race, start saving seeds, start sharing them with your neighbors, let some things cross-pollinate. The second year, everything that's in my garden has shown that it can make seeds in my garden, and so the second year is a pretty good year most of the time. The third year I think of as the magical year in land race gardening, because that's when it seems like things really are starting to thrive. The mechanism that that happens through, I don't have to know or understand. I just need to know and understand that if you plant seeds from plants that were great plants, you'll tend to get great offspring. I don't have to understand it. I just have to know that if you let them get locally adapted, they really like to thrive. That's the basis of starting a land race is just changing your attitude towards purity, towards isolation distances, towards your neighbors towards your garden, instead of being a commodity that we're, we're gonna force the seed to do this, allow the seed its freedom and let things sway and become part of the community and part of the seed.